Is your LG G4 constantly boot looping, shutting on and off, or stuck in the LG Power Up logo? This is the only video on YouTube that will walk you through the entire process of fully repairing your phone and improving the cooling so that it doesn't happen again. That's coming up. Hey guys, this is Human from CellularDR.com, coming to you from sunny Southern California. Welcome to our channel and thank you for tuning in for another episode of the LG G4 Troubleshooting and Repair Series Part 2. In the previous LG G4 repair video part 1 linked above, I showed you a few examples of the LG G4 boot looping and also getting stuck on the LG startup logo until the battery died or the chip burned out. In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair this problem. As usual, we've added some links below showing you the equipment and supplies used for this repair and where you can get the replacement parts. We have spent countless man hours and numerous parts to determine the cause of this problem and to devise the best way to repair it. This is a very frustrating defect, especially from a customer perspective. One minute you're using your phone and the next it's either locked up on the LG logo or shutting itself off and turning back on every 30 seconds or so. Depending on your specific needs, there are many different options on how to proceed with this repair. But in this video, we're going to show you how to completely repair this phone and get it 100% working and fully functional again. We're also going to show you a follow-up video on how to add additional heat sinks to the board to keep this problem from reoccurring. So without further ado, let's get started. This phone has a double stack processor IC chip, which means that there are two separate processor IC chips installed on top of each other. We have determined that due to insufficient cooling design flaw by LG, over a period of time, the processors are overclocked and the upper IC processor chip starts to deteriorate and cause the phone to boot loop or get stuck on the LG logo. In some instances, this is due to the connections beneath the IC chip. In other instances, long-term heat just wears out the chip. So here we're going to show you how to remove the top processor IC chip without damaging the bottom one. To do this, we have to be very careful and make sure to keep the following in mind. Use the least amount of heat possible and work as quickly as you can to remove the top chip. Start by putting a small amount of flux on top of the processor IC chip. Then using the JBC hot air station, running at 430 degrees Celsius and 40% airflow, start to heat the chip and carefully work the heat around the top of it. Using a thin, sharp X-Acto knife blade, cut through the epoxy underfill glue sealing the two chips together while continuing to apply heat. It will begin to loosen up, so very slowly and carefully slide the tip of the blade between the two chips and keep it there while continuing to heat the chip. Once you feel that all the solder joints are melted, give it a small upward nudge and pop it off. Now that you've removed the top processor chip, proceed with cleaning the top of the lower processor chip to get it ready for the installation of the new chip. This is a very delicate cleaning process. As you can see, there's a lot of underfill glue all over the chip. You have to take your time and patiently clean all the underfill glue and at the same time get all the contacts clean and ready to install a new IC chip. This is the most time consuming part of the repair. We're using the JBC Nano soldering station with the smallest knife shaped tip available. 
We've tried all kinds of tips and flux. This seems to be the best one for the job. There's no need to put much pressure. Just work all the epoxy glue out of the way and clean it. Once you've removed all the underfill, then clean up the contacts and get them nice and as even as possible. Now using a brush and the highest grade alcohol you can get your hands on, clean the top of the chip. Apply some new flux, continue to tin all the contacts. As you can see, you don't need to put a lot of flux here, just enough to help you accomplish the task at hand. Now apply some new clean liquid flux and clean the contacts. I like using liquid flux because it cleans much better than alcohol and it makes a better connection. Now clean any remainder epoxy underfill in the middle of the chip so that when you're installing the new chip it does not expand and cause problems. Apply a small amount of flux and using a little bit of solder paste, tend the tips of the contacts. Make sure the contacts are not bridged and are even in height so that the new chip sits perfectly even and not crooked. Now clean off the old flux with some alcohol When ready, apply a small amount of flux. Spread the flux evenly over the contacts.
line up the new processor chip, making sure you have the correct orientation. Put some flux on top of the chip and hold the chip in place with your tweezers. Start applying heat over the chip in a circular motion. It's important to try and keep as much of the flux on top of the chip so that the heat is concentrated on top and the bottom chip solder balls do not move. Keep most of the heat concentrated around the sides of the chip and not the middle. Remember, the middle of the chip is hollow and the joints are all around the chip and not in the middle. If you apply too much heat to the middle, the chip may get warped and not sit evenly. Apply additional flux as you see fit. Now looking through the sides of the chip, make sure all the solder balls are evenly melted and making good contact. Apply additional heat to the top of the chip in areas that need it while making sure the chip does not move at all. As you can see, we are very careful to keep the heat on the top chip and not allow the chip below to get too hot and expand or move. Be sure to watch the next video in this series showing you the best heatsink method and the best placement on the LG G4. We have already used this heatsink method on hundreds of phones and we know that it works. This will be the third video in the LG G4 repair series videos and I've also linked it above. Let the chip slightly cool and clean the area with a brush and alcohol. We like to use two different brushes, one for cleaning most of the original debris and flux, and then a new cleaner brush to clean it again and remove anything else left over. Then using compressed air, clean the remainder of the board and try to get rid of all the fluids and alcohol so that the contacts don't short out during the testing. Now we're going to partially reassemble the phone and test it.
This has been part two of the LG G4 troubleshooting and repair series videos. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to share this video with anyone you know that may be experiencing a similar problem with their phone. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions that may benefit anyone watching this video, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. As you can see, the phone starts up and loads all the way through the LG and AT&T logos and to the main screen of the phone. Be sure to perform a full functional test making sure all the functions of the phone are still working. Now I would like to point out a few important things to keep the phone healthy and functional. Perform a full ultrasonic cleaning to get rid of all the flux between the two chips and on the board. You may have to replace the microphones, as they do usually go out after ultrasonic cleaning. I would love to hear back from you regarding your experience trying to perform this repair. It would be very helpful to us and anyone watching this video and thinking about trying this repair. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to click on the subscribe button to be notified of more tips and tricks on how to keep your smartphone running efficiently.